Diego Lopez is just different. Why he's such a fan favorite and why he has the potential to be a UFC superstar in this video. Hello and welcome to Bloodsport MMA. Yo, alaykum, man. What's good? <laughs> Diego Lopez, born in Manaus, Brazil, fighting out of the Lobo Gym out of Mexico. And he's a 23 and 6 featherweight prospect. Now, what makes him so special? You might look at him and be like, his hair. His hair definitely has an impact on his potential star power because, if we're completely honest, you can be as good as you want. Look at Kamaru Usman, you can be as good and technical as you want. If you don't bring a special fighting style, a special look to the cage, you will be, you can be a star, but you will never be that superstar. You know what I mean? You have to have something that people remember you for. And with Diego Lopez, it's not only his crazy hairstyle, it's also his very exciting fighting style. Now, how did it all start? Most people might think, hey, he's a new guy, new to the MMA scene, up and coming or whatever. No, Diego Lopez actually made his MMA pro debut in 2012. You might think, isn't Diego Lopez a young guy? Yeah, he is. He did his debut at 17 years of age and won by KO. Yes, I knocked him out. You knocked him out? Yeah. Now he's 29 years old. He still hasn't hit his prime yet, and he has a ton of experience on his belt. As I said, he's fighting for close to 12 years now. How many years? How many years? He did this debut in September of 2012, and has a record of 23 and 6. Now, how did he even get into the UFC? Hardcore UFC fans might remember him from before his official UFC run now that started with his, his fight against Mofsad Ibloev. He was on the Contender Series in the year 2021. He fought Joe Anderson Brito, who is also a UFC prospect by now, and he lost that fight because of a technical decision. So he got eye poked in the third round, if I remember right, and if the fight goes past two and a half rounds, I think, if my rule brain my UFC MMA rule brain is functioning right. If the fight goes past two and a half rounds and it has to be stopped because of an eye poke, stop the stoppage! Go tell him stop the stoppage! It goes to the judge's decision for the scorecards that are in until this point. Because normally an eye poke, if it's early in the fight, it's just a no contest if the guy can continue. The Lopez couldn't continue, so he lost a technical decision to a very tough opponent in Joanna Sembrito. Diego Lopez is not your typical undefeated, I have never been touched prospect. Diego Lopez has been knocked out twice in his career. Diego Lopez has six losses under his belt. Diego Lopez is not that typical up and coming star that we know and that makes him so special. I think that's one of the reasons why people like him so much. Other than his charisma and everything, his aura that he brings uh, every time you see him, see him talk and see him fight and whatever. But that's really something that makes him unique in that way, right? So how did he even get to the UFC then? Because after the Contender Series fight, he didn't just go on a tear and knock everyone out. He actually lost his next fight. He got a chance to fight on Fury FC, which is on UFC Fight Pass, and lost that fight by decision as well. So he was on a two-fight losing streak, probably thinking like, damn, is this career really going to work out? Is this ever going to work out for me? I'm an average guy. More than average. Then he fought another fight on Fury FC, won by kills, if I remember right. Went back to Lux, which is... The, the, the organization where he had his most fights in, in Mexico, as far as I know, and won another fight by finish. But then the UFC called him on, I might butcher this, three days notice, four days notice, two days notice, very short notice at, at least, to fight not just some unranked UFC guy, to fight Mofsar Ivloev, who was by then, I have to make, take a guess here, number 9, 8, 10, something like that. I think he was in the top 10 ranked already, which is so unique. This barely ever happens that you're unranked and you're not even in the UFC and you get a shot against a top 10 guy, even top 15 guy in the UFC. That barely ever happens. But somehow probably he was the only one that answered the call because the opponent of Ivloev had to pull out. So he uh, faced Ivloev, he, he found himself facing Ivloev on a few days notice on the biggest stage of his career. and. I myself did a video back then, you can find it on Instagram probably. I made a video about put the house on Ivloev. I said this is, he's like, was like a minus 600 favorite. And I was like, that's not even the, such bad odds, minus 600, because he fights a guy that has 
by then five losses. He was 21 and five when he fought Ivloev. Five losses, two by knockout, lost, lost against Brito in the contender series, lost his next fight on Fury FC. Like he's not gonna beat Ivloev, who is still and was back then also undefeated and back then has never really been challenged. I was like, this is gonna be an easy fight. This is gonna be the first finish in Ivloev's career. Well, if you watch that fight, yeah, Ivloev won, but that fight was as tough and as close as it gets. That was a crazy war. I mean, Ivloev had to really dig deep and I don't know how he escaped some of those submission attempts by, by uh, Lopez. Lopez fought an amazing fight with zero preparation and that's the fight that put Lopez on every UFC fan's map. After that fight, I immediately became a fan of Lopez. Immediately. I was like, this kid is special. He has that special type of aura, fighting style, and charisma. Is he fucking awesome? And I remained to be right. Because in his next fight, came out there, 1 minute 30 seconds, I believe, got a submission. Fight after that, fought Pat Sabatini, who is no joke, who was like 5 and 1 in the UFC back then. But well, back then, uh, it was half a year ago or something. And submitted him as well in the first round in like under two minutes, I think. So he proved himself to be the real deal. And the UFC saw his star potential pretty fast because I think it was even after the Vloy fight, after the fight he lost, he was already in a freaking uh, advertisement spot of Cuervo Tequila in Mexico. I was like, didn't he just lose? Like, or, or maybe won that was after his win, so like one win in the UFC. I was like, what the hell? But he has that special thing. He has that thing where he just drills himself into the hearts of UFC fans. You just cannot hate Diego Lopez. You can maybe not be a fan, but you cannot hate this guy. He's so likable. His fighting style is so fun to watch. He's not a guy that just goes out there like Bilal Mohammed style and just wins a weird decision. He goes out there and finishes people. In my opinion, he definitely has the potential to be a champion one day and he definitely has the potential to be a superstar. As I said, hairstyle, his, just his look overall, he's easily recognizable. You, you see him, I don't know, shopping in the city, you will recognize him immediately even if you have just watched one fight of him. Easy. Plus, as I said, amazing fighting style. Plus, also, as I mentioned in the beginning, he has two big nations and probably just a whole continent behind him. Because he was born in Brazil, Portuguese-speaking part of South America, and also pretty close with Portugal. They don't like each other too much, but you know what I mean? Same language, so same kind of um, uh, people that are watching, you know what I mean? So audience, what I meant to say. But then he lives now since a long time and trains out of the Lobo gym in Mexico, the gym where like Alexa Carrasso fights out of, and you name it, a lot of UFC fighters. And he has that side as well. The Spanish-speaking Latino America part, which is huge. So he has a whole continent behind him. And he has the potential to be something really big. He has his first shot, well, his second shot, because if Loyal was ranked, but his first kind of official shot at the UFC ranking by fighting Diego, uh, Diego Lopez, God damn it. Sadiq Yusuf at UFC 300. Hell of a fight. Yusuf only has three losses in his career as well, so a start. Not an easy fight at all for Lopez, but I do think Lopez can get it done. Diego Lopez is a star on the rise, a guy that has faced it worst in his career before, that has seen it all in the game since nearly 12 years. Pro in the pro MMA game since nearly 12 years. Amazing fighter, entertaining human being, great star potential. That is my opinion, Diego Lopez. You write your opinion in the comments. Do you like him? Do you maybe even hate him? What do you like most about him? Write it all in the comments, guys. I appreciate that. Check out the blog for merch, blogshop.net. Subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Comment down below, as I said. Stay bloody, you guys. And until the next one, bye-bye. Bloodsport Act.